In this video, we're going to look at the concept of a molecule. Now, a molecule is first and foremost a chemical unit. That means that it has specific properties because of the composition of it. In other words, the atoms it's made up of. It also has a specific shape and therefore it behaves in a certain way and has certain properties which one will learn about later on in grade 10 and in particular in grade 11 and grade 12. But it's a chemical unit consisting of two or more atoms. So you cannot get a molecule with only one atom in it. The smallest, simplest molecules have at least two atoms. They are diatomic. In other words, they have two atoms. But yeah, it's very, very, this is very important. They are chemically bonded together. Now, there are different types of chemical bonding. In grade 10, you will look at this in more detail. There's ionic bonding, which involves ions being formed between atoms. We've already learned about how electrons leave metal atoms to form metal ions, and then they go to non-metal atoms and form negative ions. Then the, those positive and negative ions will attract each other. That's known as ionic bonding. In this case here, we see that hydrogen, which is not a metal, bonds with itself. Now, this type of bonding, which we're not going to ask you about in grade 8, is where electrons are shared between the two hydrogens. This is known, and just for the sake of interest, this is known as covalent bonding. And covalent bonding is the sharing of electrons between two or more atoms. We're going to work with in particular between two atoms. Now, we know, we should know by now that in order to fill the first energy level, energy level one, we need two electrons. Now, instead of transferring electrons, which is a very expensive energy-wise, what hydrogen does is it just shares its electron with another hydrogen. And there, look, this hydrogen's got two electrons in its first energy level, and this hydrogen's got two electrons in its first energy level. And hey, sharing is way more easier than grabbing or taking. And that's exactly what happens chemically. So a hydrogen gas molecule is two hydrogen atoms bonded together. Now, the way we represent this on grade 8 level, and we will learn other ways of representing this in grade, in particular in grade 10 and grade 11, is we're going to just represent it with spheres. With, we're going to say, okay, this is a hydrogen, and this is a hydrogen, and that's the, what the molecule looks like. Yes, deep inside here, the, we know there's a, there's a positive nucleus. But for grade 8 level, we know that, yes, we know that deep inside here, there's a positive nucleus. But we're not going to do it, represent it like that. For grade 8, we're just going to start very simple and say, well, it looks like two balls that are connected together. You know those magnets that are very, those very strong magne magnets, neodymium magnets, neodymium magnets, if you put two of them together and they hold together like that, you can think of that as a, as a very simple model of a diatomic molecule. So these are, this is a very, very simple molecule. This is the simplest molecule. We say it's an H2 molecule. And 70% of the universe is made up of this type of molecule, H2. So these molecules all have the same basic shape. They are known as elemental molecules. In other words, they are molecules made up of atoms of the same type. So therefore, they are elements. And on the periodic table, you will find them in the right-hand corner. If you look at your periodic table, there's nitrogen, 
there's oxygen, there's fluorine, then we've got chlorine, we've got bromine, we've got iodine. Now, these elements all come in the form naturally of diatomic elements. So they are made up of two identical atoms chemically bonded together. This is also known as the Knopf corner or the diatomic L. You can think of this as an L, an upside down L. And then of course also hydrogen which sits, it's, it sits with the alkali metals but in actual fact it is a non-metal, it's a gas. So the Knopf corner or the diatomic L together with hydrogen. This is the natural form in which these elements occur in nature. And they all have the same shape. They have two atoms of the same type bonded together. They obviously have different sizes because the atoms are different sizes. So hydrogen would be very small. Nitrogen would be a little bit big, would be bigger. We'd have nitrogen bigger. Oxygen would be even bigger. And so they would get bigger as we go along. But we're not going to ask you to draw the relative sizes of these molecules. We're just going to ask you to draw the shapes. And what you can say here is that if, for instance, we take the iodine molecule, then both of these atoms will be the same size. And the chemical glue, as it were, the bond, would be between them. But you do not need to show the, the symbols inside nor the actual bond. You just draw the two circles together to represent the molecule. Here is a more complex molecule. This one is made up of hydrogen and chlorine. And this is what your mom or your dad will use to clean your pool. This is pool acid, hydrochloric acid is known as pool acid and if it's very concentrated it's pretty dangerous and so the way we can represent this is we represent the chlorine which is a bigger atom and the way you can tell it's a bigger atom is because of the fact that it has if you go to the periodic table you'll see that it has a higher atomic number than what hydrogen does and so that means it's got a bigger nucleus it also means and it's it's also got more electrons and so therefore it's going to be a bigger atom and the hydrogen atom is small so we're going to represent it by a small ball and the important thing is is that they are glued together by the sharing of electrons and that's the chemical bond. So that's how we would represent a hydrochloric acid molecule, also known as hydrogen chloride. So these molecules you need to just learn. How the shapes come about, that is for when you're in grade 10 and grade 11. But the, this one is really important. This is the water molecule. So the water molecule consists of an oxygen. There's an oxygen here and two hydrogens. And the shape of it is very important. That shape, as simple as what it looks, is super important because it gives the water molecule certain properties that enable life on Earth, believe it or not. Then we've got the carbon dioxide molecule so the central atom will be carbon and these two atoms on the side are oxygen CO2 and so the chemical bond would actually be there all right as was the chemical bond would be there you can think of the chemical bond as electrostatic glue the ammonia molecule well ammonia is found in handy andy you know the stuff that you're your mom uses to clean the stove. Handy Andy consists of nitrogen, nitrogen, and two, not two, three hydrogens. So that's the ammonia molecule. Hydrogen sulfide 
is found in stink bombs. Now it's that gas that makes you want to actually vomit. If you drive past the refinery, sometimes you'll smell that terrible, terrible gas. It, it, it's got, it, you, there's no way you can, you can breathe it in without feeling like you, you actually want to get sick. That's hydrogen sulfide. It's almost like a, like a rotten egg smell. Right, that's hydrogen sulfide, and it consists of sulfur and two hydrogens. It's also got a, sh a shape very similar to water, and there's a very deep reason why that is, which you will learn about in grade, in grade 10. So key thing here is to know the shapes of these molecules and also to, to represent them, you can use different colors, and we're not going to be too strict in grade 8, but if you can sort of give a relative size difference between them, that would be good. I mean, for instance, we know that carbon, carbon is 6, 12, and oxygen is 8, 16, so we can see that we've got with the oxygen, it's got a higher mass number than carbon, and it's got more protons than carbon. So it's going to have more electrons than carbon. So oxygen is going to be a bigger molecule, a bigger atom than what carbon is. But as I say, we're not going to be too too strict about that in grade eight level. So the next molecule we look at is a very interesting molecule, and it's the hydrogen peroxide molecule and this molecule is used in order to remove the color from hair we talk about peroxiding one's hair well hydrogen peroxide is a very very aggressively reactive uh, chemical compound and it's used to take pigments out of hair and out of textiles and that now it looks when you look at the formula it looks very similar to water you know, if you think of water as H2O, water would look like, like this. That would be the oxygen. And then we would have the two hydrogens there. And that would be water. We can, we can drink that and we're fine. This, on the other hand, there are two oxygens and they are bonded to each other. And there are two hydrogens, but... The hydrogens are not bonded to the same oxygen. There's another oxygen in between. And this makes this not drinkable. You, you would not drink this. If you drank this and it was highly concentrated, you would probably die. But you certainly would land up in hospital. So we can see that the composition, what the molecules are made up of, is extremely important. It doesn't seem to be important just adding one more, more oxygen. Ah, oh, well, you add one more oxygen to water and uh, it will be okay. No, it won't be okay. It changes the molecule completely. Then this molecule here, sulfur dioxide, this is the molecule. This would be sulfur and this would be the two oxygens. Now, sulfur dioxide is the gas that you smell just after you've lit a match. Now in a match there is a powder and it's got sulfur in it. Now when you light a match that sulfur burns with oxygen and produces sulfur dioxide. It hasn't got that horrible smell like H2S, like hydrogen sulfide, but it's got a very strong sharp smell that, that makes you react to it. When you light a cracker, you also get the smell. Directly after you've lit a cracker, you, you'll, you'll smell the sharp smell. As a matter of fact, this is the gas that onions release when you cut them, which when they go into your, into your tears, into your tear ducts, it turns into sulfuric acid, which then burns your eyes. So I'd like to explain where you encounter these chemical compounds in everyday life. Hopefully that will help you to remember them. Now methane is known as is also known as marsh gas because when 
plant materials break down, they break down into simpler molecules. And the simplest of the organic molecules, you learn more about organic chemistry later on, an organic substance has got a carb in, it's got a carbon in it. So the simplest organic compound is one with one carbon, which methane has. So it has a carbon and then it's got four hydrogens bonded to it. And so this is what's known as methane. It's an explosive gas. Uh, and for the young men in grade eight, this is also um, fart. Sorry about that. I hope I'm not too crude. But uh, the gases that are emitted by humans include marsh gas, include methane, because the foods that we eat are broken down into simpler substances and molecules, methane being one of them. Now, the last molecule is a really interesting molecule, and we've heard of it. It's known as ozone. And ozone consists of three oxygen molecules that are bonded together. And there's the chemical bond. And we breathe oxygen. We breathe oxygen. Oxygen is O2. We breathe it. No problem. Breathing ozone is a problem because ozone is actually poisonous. Now, Ozone is found, there's an ozone layer high up in our atmosphere, which protects us from the ultraviolet radiation from the sun. It reduces the UV rays that come through to us on the surface. And unfortunately, over the years with us using certain chemicals, what they call CFCs, carbon fluorocarbons, they, when they float up into the upper atmosphere, destroy ozone, and then there's more UV that comes through. So ozone is a form of oxygen, but it's a poisonous form of oxygen. 